Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Chad here with another In the OT podcast for BetUpSportsBlog.com. Today we are here to break down what has occurred with the Orlando Magic organization as Stan Van Gundy and general manager Otis Smith have been shown the door. And I don't think anybody could be shocked by this. Well, at least Van Gundy losing his job and to the lesser extent Otis Smith due to what we have seen unfold here over the last number of months with this basketball team. And of course, this has everything to do with Dwight Howard, someone who I I've been extremely critical of based on the way he's handled himself, acting like an immature, spoiled brat baby who refuses to come out in the public eye and ever admit the truth of what's really going on in his mind. And uh, it really is just appalling the way, once again here, another person who I believe was doing a good job as a head coach has to lose his job because the prima donna gets his way especially in the sport of basketball where it's so star-driven. These single guys, they can dictate to the ownership pretty much what's going to happen here, and that is the only reason Van Gundy has been replaced. Now, you can go back and check the tapes here of of everything that uh, Van Gundy had said over the last couple of months. I believe that he handled it with a lot of class. I know a lot of people said, oh, why did he come out on record and say that he heard that he might be fired from all these sources up top? I've always liked the fact that this guy is a straight shooter. He's no BS. He comes out and speaks from the heart. And he doesn't fear losing his job. And that's just something that I really admire. Because so many people give you the standard cliche answer to avoid the controversy. They don't want to get into hot water. They don't want the follow-up questions. They're going to be difficult from the media. But not Stan Van Gunn. He doesn't need Dwight Howard. He doesn't need the Orlando Magic. He's a bright enough guy that if he wants to find another job in the sport of basketball, he will. And if not, like he says, he has plenty of things to do. I'm sure he's got a couple mil put away in the bank account that if he didn't work for a while, he'll be just fine financially. So I'm happy to see someone take that hard stance his whole time there and never give in because oftentimes you see these coaches that are put in these positions here where they pretty much bend over backwards and do whatever the players want just so they can keep their job and try to be a peacemaker. And uh, that wasn't the case with Van Gundy. And when you look at his tenure and what he was able to accomplish with Orlando, I think he did a great job because... He was never given a fair opportunity to have a consistent roster that was built around Dwight Howard. There are so many times where uh, the interchangeable pieces in terms of role players were constantly moved in and out. Yes, Dwight was there, but if anybody thinks this is the type of franchise player you can build around to win an NBA championship, you are dreaming. He is just simply not good enough offensively. He doesn't have a, a, a jump shot at all, really, from the outside. All you can do is just post him up. He's got a couple of moves. Nobody's disputing the fact that he is not a great defensive player, but you cannot just have a great defensive player and an average offensive player be the person that is going to win a championship. He needs to be the secondary guy, and they needed to add a proper perimeter scorer that is the go-to guy when you're looking for baskets late in games, and they've tried it with Jason Richardson, with Hugh Turgaloo, with Vince Carter, Jameer Nelson, and none of these guys, I believe, were the proper fit if they really were serious about contending and winning a championship. He got them to finals. They beat LeBron James and Cleveland a few years ago when they were heavy underdogs. He got them to the playoffs every single year and uh, got the most out of his roster and was always willing to change things up a little bit and really, I think, helped develop guys like J.J. Redick and Anderson this year and even getting the most out of Jameer Nelson and, and Richardson when he was there. So I give Van Gundy a lot of credit. It's unfortunate that he had to lose his job here. It was extremely obvious this was going to happen. You know, you hear the BS that comes out of the mouth of Alex Martins, the CEO today, saying this had nothing to do with Dwight Howard. Oh, sure, it had nothing to do with him. He can come out and say that uh, Van Gundy was a great tactician, but the general reason that he uh, was let go of his job here had more to do with the fact that there were other elements of the job that were not living up to their expectations, i.e. relationships. So if you're going to come out and say that, why don't you just admit the fact that he wasn't getting along with Dwight Howard and as an organization moving forward, we know that he is more important to us and we are going to do whatever it takes to please him. And if that required getting rid of Van Gundy, then so be it. Instead, they have to come up with a little BS answer that that wasn't the truth. Because you know, just like what happened with LeBron James in Cleveland, this to a lesser extent, extent 
They got rid of Mike Brown because they were trying to please him, even though Mike Brown was probably doing a decent job in Cleveland. And then what do they happen after? They have no coach, and they bring in Byron Scott, who hasn't really done much since. So the next coach they bring in might not even necessarily be better than Van Gundy, but they did it just to try to keep Howard around. If I was the owner there, I would never do this. I'm more of a, a firm, straight shooter. I would go up to, to Howard and say, you know what, it's pretty simple. If you want to stay here long term, we're willing to accommodate you. We will get rid of Van Gundy. We don't need you to come out and publicly say it. We know that there's enough of a torn relationship that we'll just make the decision on your behalf, but that means that we are demanding you to sign a 10-year extension or whatever it is, instead of this little wimpy one-year option, because what are they going to do after this year if he says, I refuse to sign the extension and then leaves? So then they've got rid of the GM and the coach just to try to please him, and then he still doesn't guarantee anything, and it puts him back to square one. He's completely holding the organization hostage, and he needs to make a decision and be a man about things, and that is what's absolutely absurd here, the fact that they're bending over backwards for Dwight Howard, who isn't even all that great it's not LeBron James it's not Kevin Durant it's not Kobe Bryant it's not even a a bona fide superstar that you can build your team around that's why it's comedy the way he's pretty much pulling all the strings over there and that's the way I stand with everything and uh like I said just unfortunate for Stan Van Gundy the little brat continues to get his way and I guess that's the era that we live in in modern day sports. You can't replace a guy that's going to make $20 million a year, but you can replace a coach that's only making a couple million dollars. It's certainly not the first time it's happened. and it certainly will not be the last time. It pretty much ends a chapter to what has been a disaster, I believe, the last few years in Orlando. Chad here in the OT Podcast, BetUpSportsBlog.com, breaking it all down as the magic uh, move forward here from the Smith and Van Gundy uh, general manager head coaching regime.